I presume. <laughs> so, the BBSN is an all-volunteer nonprofit organization advocating for public issues, uh, doing fun stuff like parties, doing serious stuff like writing letters to council. Um, so thank you to all the volunteers and all the public space supporters in general for all the work you've done over the years. It's been, uh, it's been a blast and the cool thing is, looking at the photos over there, I'm discovering all the amazing things that EPSN has done before I was part of the EPSN. So uh, talk to people around you, you'll hear lots of funny stories and, and such secret hidden public spaces in this evening. Um, thanks to the DJ in particular. Um, so we're going to have a couple people speaking, um, a couple of our longtime friends of the VPSN, and I'm going to introduce them one by one, and I think they're going to come up and speak. So first off, Andrea Reimer, city councillor, soccer player. Um, I thought you were wearing your soccer shoes. And, and public space champion with a capital C. Come on up, Andrea. Thanks so much for your support. OCMACI, Kian Sana, Andrea Reimer, Tina Chin Tala, East Vancouver, and Soleil Chin Quinlan Ta Homaskiam, Ta Squamish, a Ta Suela Chito Homeo, Hudson Squalowan, Quinn Squachnomi Yap, Hoichka. So, uh, respected people, my name is Andrea Reimer. I come from East Vancouver. I'm a settler here. And I was expressing my gratitude to the Musqueam, Squamish, and Soil of Tooth First Nations for allowing us to be here and to work together with us on reconciliation of their title and rights to the territory. Um, I was asked to speak here tonight and was trying to, you know, it, it's funny because I, I realized that I got my iPhone um, the same year that I went to my first public Vancouver Public Spaces Network event. Um, and they, it turns out, were born in the same year. And, and I was thinking about what life would be like without my iPhone. So I feel like I'm a brand name for Apple up here. I'm smartphone, the first smartphone that I have. And I would argue that life without Public Spaces Network, VPSN, and Vancouver would be about the same. And I know we have these sort of big grand moments, the sort of pop crawls, the where's the square, um, and those matter. They matter a lot. And how awesome that today I was, the thing I did earlier before this was go down um, to talk about the permanent closure of Robson Square, which we finally passed as a council. wanted to offer a toast to you and all of you. A very successful public spaces conference in Vancouver, as well as 10 amazing years for the BPSN. Congratulations. That's why I'm not saying a whole lot of this. Because these amazing people are saying amazing things. So, next up, Brett Totteren. I crowdsource three things to say about people. Um, we're going to start serious. Former director of planning with the city of Vancouver. <laughs> An important voice, i.e. Twitter, of uh, city building. And allegedly the only man who brought his newborn baby home on the bus in Vancouver, maybe. I think, is that true? 
You tweeted about it. Somebody tweeted about it. All right, Brent Hodderin. Thank you so much for your support over the years. I cannot be the only one who's ever done that, and I think it, it, my wife and I did that, to be clear. Um, but maybe I was the only one with enough Twitter followers for the media, mainstream media, to actually pick up on the fact that I took a bus. We took a bus home from the hospital. Um, I, I'm glad I'm going second, so I don't have to say what Andreas already said in First Nations language. I could have done that, <laughs> but I won't, because you already did. That was really impressive. Uh, Andrea's smartphone, the Vancouver Public Space Network, and I share a birthday. It's been 10 years since I became a Vancouverite, so I must have arrived right around the time that you started. I think that's coincidental. But I remember thinking when I heard that such a thing existed, or had recently been born, that I was profoundly happy about that. That coming from another place to Vancouver, it just felt obvious and right that Vancouver would have an advocacy organization about public life and public spaces, etc. And in the six years I was at City Hall in partnership with you, uh, sometimes being in disagreement with you, and those are my most favorite moments of your existence, when you disagreed with City Hall. I don't know why I keep looking at you, Ed, but, but And we talked about uh, smart ways to disagree with City Hall once or twice. Uh, but I think that is probably the most important value of an advocacy organization like Vancouver Public Space Network, to be both a champion and a plotter of the smart decisions, but a constructive critic of either the wrong decisions or the lack of decisions, the lack of action. And it's those moments which are the hardest moments for your organization where you are my favorite. The only other thing I'll say is that now that I'm working in cities around the world, I talk about Vancouver Public Space Network quite a bit because I tell the story of what you do uh, in this context to other cities that don't have you. And A, they're always jealous. They want to know how that happened. They want to know how you work. And we have that conversation as part of a starting point, a catalyst point, for both a conversation and a culture about better public spaces and better city making. So Vancouver is lucky to have you. Other cities are jealous that they don't have you yet, but I expect maybe as I go around the world, we'll get more and more calls uh, to find out what makes you tick, how you've done what you've done, and how you've been so successful. So I wish you 10 and more years of uh, continued growth and provocation, and keep holding all of us accountable. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, so next up, uh, if you hear a guy in the city. Oh wait, he's right in front of me, in the brightest shirt. I won't, you guys will have to guess the name of the book uh, when he comes on stage. Come on up, thank you so much for your also very loud voice and awesome city making. Uh, so, uh, you're wrong. I'm actually an extremely grumpy person, which is one of the reasons I so love VPSN. Uh, there are so many problems with the, the cities we live in, in this particular city. And uh, actually, I'm going to get out of grumpy mode because I was at the conference. Um, the thing I love about uh, VPSN and all of you who bring your creativity and a sense of fun to what's essentially a political act. It's just that, that marrying of, of fun and politics, because that's what this is about, transforming spaces so they reflect who we are or should be as a city. And, uh, and making it look like it was just a kind of crazy idea for something fun to do on the weekend, uh, which is why so many people uh, for years were calling up VPSN and were like, hey, uh, can you just animate this thing for our for our city or corporate or, or activist event, um, which is completely um, antithetical to uh, how you should be operating. And I know that because I was one of those people when I worked for the Museum of Vancouver. We had a crazy idea to 
to turn uh, Granville Street into a construction zone of the future where we would take uh, styrofoam blocks and you know create a new kind of public space and it was a stupid idea so much work and obviously the BSN was the first partner who came on and said yeah we just want to like kill ourselves for several months so we can have this absolute transformative moment Jonathan, Bla Jonathan Blakely uh, uh, transforming this space into an, a vision of the future so I know I'm grateful for that I'm grateful for this in creativity you show thinking the city can really be anything we want it to be the sky, the fucking sky train can be a party if we want it to be. You're amazing. Thank you. Sorry for using the F word. <laughs> anyway, I, I guess I just want to, besides my gratitude, I want to leave you with a challenge, and, and it's that you know you've accomplished so much in this last decade, and I think the challenge we're seeing in this city and cities around the world is okay. We know how to activate public space. We know how to f have fun. We know how to make spaces more human and social, but do we really yet know how to include everyone in that process? So if you can put your energies into making yourselves uncomfortable, and I should say if we can, because I need to do it as well, to, to try and make spaces especially transformative by working with people who may make us uncomfortable, who are really different from us, who are poorer than us. I mean, look around the room. So how can we be more inclusive in ways that really scare us but maybe uh, even more satisfying in the end. Um, and I say that as a fun, a super fun, exciting, positive thing, not as a scary challenge for the end of the night. So again, thank you. I am so grateful as a citizen for all you've done. Let's keep going. So, yay! Every day, um, which I know well. Uh, the director of the BPSN, Andrew Pass, and I'm, let's, let's, let's give him a round. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for your provocations. I love that. This is an organization that thrives on the idea of provocation, the idea of provoking people to think differently about public space about trying to challenge ourselves and the residents and citizens and visitors to Vancouver to think about how we can turn our plazas, our parks, our streets, our alleys from where they are now into something golden to enrich public life in the city and to make it a transformative experience for everyone. We started as a very, very small organization 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago now, down at the Roundhouse. It was a kitchen table meeting in that grand tra tradition, uh, a group of about eight or nine of us sitting around, some of us really keen on billboards, others interested in guerrilla gardening in the middle of the night, still others concerned about ideas about putting surveillance cameras all up and down the entertainment district. And we realized that the common thread uniting all of these issues, whether or not they took place downtown or at the south end of the city, was public space. It is the thread, the glue, the tissue that ties together all of the spaces in the city, all of the neighborhoods, and it's the thing that makes them so vital. This is where life unfolds in cities. And we started thinking about ways that we could try to foster or celebrate or advocate for more and better public space in the city. Ways to improve it, ways to brighten it, ways to spark delight and whimsy and serendipity. And we thought also at the same time that we might just do this for a couple of weeks or maybe a month or two and have some fun with it. When we did it though, our first intervention and our first bit of advocacy work, we all of a sudden got people asking how they could join. And we realized that in this city, there is a tremendous thirst for opportunities to engage with public space, to brighten public spaces. And our network from that early few days grew by tens, dozens, to the point where we are now. Ten years later, very surprisingly, I must say, ten years later, um, with a wonderful repertoire of stuff behind us. It's been a fantastic journey, and we really are looking to the next ten years to try and challenge ourselves more as we move forward. I'll say one thing uh, in conclusion. The VPSN has always been an all-volunteer organization. You can spend lots and lots of money doing placemaking, and you can make some great stuff happen as a result. But we've always been 
rooted in the philosophy that the greatest asset in any city are the people that are going to step forward just with a question asked, do you want to lend a hand to make this space better? And step forward time and time and time again. We've had so many good, beautiful folks come through the BPSN. So I want to conclude by asking you if you wouldn't mind giving them a round of applause because they're the people making this city great every day. Thank you very much and enjoy the party.